Good afternoon. I'm Mark Taylor with the Eastern Board of Health, here to talk to you about ticks and mosquitoes today. Inform you about other dangers that are out there that you need to know about. Let's talk about mosquitoes first off. This is um, something I do every year for the Town of Eastern Schools, and you're the lucky grade to get um, to listen to me today for about a half hour or so. First, I'd like to ask you some questions, but there's no one here, so we'll have to put the question out there. Maybe you can answer them at home, and then I'll give you the answer, okay? Mosquitoes are very dangerous. I'm sure you've all heard about Triple E, West Nile virus, virus and things like that. Um, for first thing I'd like to ask you at home, how long have mosquitoes been around? Question, okay? Mosquitoes have been around since the dawn of the dinosaur, okay? Good to know. So we, they've been around a lot longer than us. They're also the number one killer of human mankind uh, over all disease and everything else since human, the human habitation has started. Very important things about mosquitoes you need to know. Only the female mosquito bites. The male mosquito lives off of plant nectar such as <coughs> flowers and stuff like a, like a um, bee or a hummingbird. So they bite uh, mammals and um, cold-blooded creatures and, and things to that nature. The question is, where do mosquitoes lay their eggs? Stagnant water is where mosquitoes lay their eggs. Things like old tires, toys that hold water, and buckets and bird baths. To stop them from laying eggs and promulgating the growth of mosquitoes, it's good to empty these things out and change your bird bath water almost daily. It's very important that you do this to help stop the growth of mosquito larvae. At the end of this, we'll show you a video about how the mosquitoes go through the life cycle from egg to pupa to adult, from egg larvae pupa to adult, okay? Let's talk a little bit about more facts about mosquitoes. Do you think mosquitoes only live during the summer? Well, they don't. They live during the winter. We live in New England. There's always some February day where it becomes 60 degrees. So those mosquitoes are hibernating under leaf mats and everything in the woods. So just know that. That's how they get from year to year. Now, the most prominent time mosquitoes actually come out are in dawn and dusk, okay? So that's in the morning, right when the sun's coming up, or in the evening, right when the sun's coming down. And that's usually when you're going to see the, um, the highest population mosquitoes. There are aggressive day-biting mosquitoes that you'll find when you're in the shade during the summer. There are also midnight uh, biting mosquitoes. Okay, so they don't only just bite in the summer. What are some things we can do to protect ourselves against, mosqui against mosquito bites and get in the infection of disease from mosquitoes? Is yes, wearing bug spray. Before you go out and play, put on bug spray. And the state still recommends bug spray containing DEET, the chemical DEET, yes. And if you don't like the chemical DEET on your skin, at least put it on your clothing. That way it helps keep the mosquitoes away. Long sleeves, long pants, things like that also help mosquitoes uh, keep them away. I know in a 90 degree day, you don't wanna wear jeans and a sweatshirt, but that's, that's what they recommend during any outdoor uh, activity. Now, all mosquitoes aren't the same. Some mosquitoes only bite reptiles, some only bite birds, some bite birds and mammals, wear mammals, of course. So what you need to know is that there's different species of mosquitoes <coughs> in Massachusetts. Now, I bet you all wanna take a piece of paper out at home, maybe write down your guess of how many different mosquito species there actually are in Massachusetts. Well, did you write it down? Let me give you a second. Okay, guess what? There's 51 species of mosquitoes in, East, in, in Easton and in Massachusetts, okay? Some, as I said, like biting reptiles, cold-blooded animals, birds, mammals, some are crossbiters, and that's how we get infection. I wanna talk about that a little bit. So birds migrate up here from Florida in the summer, and Florida has triple E, just like we have triple E. Um, disease. So what we'll have to know is that these birds carry it and that there's a couple species of mosquitoes that actually bite birds but also bite humans. Now that's a, a cross vector and that's how 
the mosquitoes transport, transport disease to humans. So it's very, very important to try to protect yourself from mosquitoes. So all mosquitoes don't bite people, only a few species do. It's probably on the order of six to eight species of mosquito in Massachusetts that really bite people that are either cross biters or just mammal biters. <coughs> So, let me ask you another question. What color, and they did a test on this, do you think mosquitoes are attracted to the most? I'll give you a hint. It's one of the more popular colors. Why don't you write it down on your piece of paper right now and see if you're right when I give you the answer. One second later, here I am. The answer is red. For some reason, mosquitoes, although they're colorblind, are, seem to be more attracted to the color red. So you may want to avoid wearing red sweatshirt, and red pants, and red shoes, you know, when you're out. Okay. So we learned that mosquitoes like to live in stagnant pools of water. That's why swimming pools have chemicals in them, and the water's rotated through the pump system that's not stagnant water. So treated swimming pools with pump systems that are running are a good way to keep mosquitoes away. So we're not so worried about them. Just remember to tell your parents that we need to empty out the bird bath, any, any buckets after a rainstorm, and then flip the bucket upside down so that it doesn't uh, fill with water the next time it rains. So try to keep on top of those things and you'll have a safer yard from mosquitoes. Okay, so now let's talk about what mosquitoes are really attracted to. Mosquitoes are very attracted to, we mentioned the color red, but that's not very attracted to, but really what hones them in on you is movement, a little bit of our, our theromones, our hormones, that, this, that our natural smell that we give off, body heat, and carbon dioxide, what you exhale. So that's how mosquitoes find you for a blood meal. And uh, female mosquitoes use this blood meal to feed their eggs and grow their baby mosquitoes. So, so in short, Use bug spray, wear long sleeves and pants if, if you can. Dump out still water or stagnant water, as I like to call it. Choose the indoor activities at high peak times, such as dawn and dusk, and, and do things just like that, okay? Now, let's take a look over here at one of the things I've brought to show you today. This is what the mosquito control uses to take chemical, and they walk through the swamps, and this has inside, which you probably can't see, a little measurement size. They can put chemicals in there, figure out how much water there is, and then they cast it onto the water to help stop mosquitoes from growing from the, through the, from the egg to the larvae stages when they're in the water. And then they come out and go to the top and, uh, as the pupa stage. And they come out of the water as an adult mosquito. Very important to know that some of the tools of the trade Oh, very interesting, rather. This is a, a version of a mosquito trap that they use to trap mosquitoes out in the, in the woods. And what they do is a scientist actually sits under a microscope and separates mosquitoes by species. So one will be a pipin, one will be a melanora, and they'll sit there and what they'll do is they'll take 50 of the same species of mosquito that carries the disease Triple E or West Nile virus. And what they do is they put them in a little blender type thing, make a little ooze uh, uh, compartment thing out of it, and then they sample it. And they can test that ooze to see if it's positive for West Nile virus or Triple E. And that's what's considered a positive pool of mosquitoes. So if you ever heard that term, oh, the Board of Health is reporting that there's a, pot of, a one positive pool of mosquitoes, it's 50 mosquitoes all blended up and then sampled. Okay, now what I'd like to do is have you watch a quick video that you can see um, here, on, uh, here um, about mosquito growth going through the egg to pupa, uh, egg larvae pupa to adult stage. That being said, I'd like to move on after the video. Whether you want to or not, you may be breeding mosquitoes around your house. As the water in these places turns slimy with fallen leaves and algae, 
it becomes a perfect place for mosquito larvae to feed and grow. These man-made catch basins lack the minnows and other predators you find in natural bodies of water. In the Everglades, the mosquito fish Gambusia is famous for picking off the larvae. A carnivorous plant called the bladderwort can also capture and digest mosquito larvae. In nature, water stagnates in drying pools. Even an old tortoise shell can collect water. Stagnant water can be temporary, but it may last long enough for a mosquito to complete its brief life cycle. In Florida, bromeliads are mosquito factories, as my son Richard and I soon discovered while making this film. The leaves of the bromeliad funnel water into the base of the plant. The mosquito takes advantage of this protected reservoir. The mosquito has been a scourge to people since the dawn of humanity. It can transmit encephalitis and malaria. Despite its tiny size, the mosquito is no joke. Surprisingly, it's not the male mosquito that plagues us. He only sips plant juices. The female is the bloodsucker. She needs a blood meal to make her eggs. Most species of mosquitoes lay a raft of tiny eggs on the surface of a stagnant pool like you might find in a bromeliad. After floating for a day or two, the eggs hatch into larvae. The larvae grow quickly, feeding on algae and bits of organic matter. They breathe through a siphon tube, which they use to penetrate the surface for a quick breath. Within days, it is time for the third phase of the mosquito's development. The larva curls into the shape of a comma, molts, and begins to rest while it is developing. This pupa stage cannot eat anything, but it does have two air tubes for breathing. After a few more days, metamorphosis has been accomplished. Like a scene stolen from science fiction, the pupa splits open at the surface of the stagnant pool. egg, larva, pupa, adult. These are the four stages of what is called complete metamorphosis. Onto the water steps an adult mosquito, complete with wings and a piercing mouth part, so amazingly different from its larval form. For a moment, it allows its body to harden, and then it's off to find its first meal. Welcome back. Here we're to talk about mosquito uh, ticks. We just talked about mosquitoes. Now ticks, they're coming, becoming more and more prominent here in Easton and anything within the 495 belt. When I grew up here in Easton as a young guy, there weren't too many deer ticks around. It was mostly dog ticks and dog ticks don't carry Lyme disease. And that's what we're gonna talk about very important today. Deer ticks and deer ticks that carry Lyme disease and how to try to prevent yourself from getting bit. Lyme disease is a very, very bad illness you can get, can cause a lot of problems with you, and sometimes even death. So we don't want to get Lyme disease, so we want to stay away from the, the tick, um, the deer tick population if we can. And it's gotten a little worse because there's a lot more deer around, and the deer carry the tick around, and that's how they get from one spot to another. They actually get the Lyme disease and the disease from the gray mouse, and there's a little cycle over here 
you can see you got deer tick, gray mouse, squirrels to the um, deer and then offshoot to eggs. Now deer ticks are a very small, small tick. Um, they, a baby, a small deer tick that's not fully grown might be the size of a, a seed, you know, something very small, small, smaller than a sesame seed, probably like a, um, I don't know, smaller than a sesame seed. Let's, and we all know what a sesame seed looks like, you know, the little seeds on top of the burger buns. Okay. Now, I like to do question and answer things, but I'm just going to throw out some questions for you, some information. You know, you may think that ticks can fly. They can't. Ticks cannot jump. They cannot. Ticks actually fall off branches and grab onto your clothing, or they crawl up you as you walk by brush or long grass. It's very important to try to stay in short grass areas. They're less tick prone. And if you do go in the woods to maybe cuff, wear long pants, cuff them, pull your socks up over your pants, that's a good thing. And definitely DEET containing bug spray is recommended to wear, if you, especially if you're going on a nice hike here in town, maybe up at Borderland or Wheaton Farm or something. Um, can you feel a tick bite you? No, you cannot. They actually numb your skin before they take their the little needle-like chainsaw nose and stick it into you before they get a blood mill. And like the mosquito ticks, only the female bites. The male tick doesn't bite for a blood meal. Um, so, very important. Now, you know, we, we talked about, you know, bug spray, long sleeves, protecting yourself. Now, the most important thing you need to know as a kid here in town is how to remove a tick. The first thing you should do is you shouldn't remove it yourself. You should have a parent uh, or an older sister, 18 years or older, or a guardian, um, some, an adult, adult you trust to pull the tick out. And the key is to use tweezers and get really low to the tip of the tick and then pull it out that way, okay? It's very important because you don't want to leave the head of the tick in your body and rip the body off because then it stays in for a couple days, it's irritating, It'll your body will eventually push it out. Um, they say it takes about 24 to 48 hours for you to catch Lyme disease from a tick if it bites you. So if you were out in the woods and you came home and there's a tick on you, it's only been an hour, pull it out, you're probably going to be fine. But some things you want to look for, and I'm going to point to it here, is this red circle. If you have a red circle like this, you need to go to the doctors and they can prescribe medicine. This is early stage Lyme disease. And what, what they can do is they can give you a prescription and you take antibiotics and it helps cure your Lyme disease if it's caught early. That's the important thing. First of all, not getting it, and if you get it, to catch it early. Um, common places for you to get tick bites, warm places on your body, okay? Think warm places, armpit, ankles around the sock, okay? Believe it or not, behind the ears, in the scalp, in your hair, and yes, my own son got one in his belly button and got Lyme disease, so he had the red circle around his belly button. So belly buttons are very common. People don't even think of them. It's a nice warm place for them. They like to borrow in there and, and, and t you know, get their blood meal from you. So I talked about the size of a, um, a seed, and it was the poppy seed. I couldn't remember. It just came to me in my book here, letting you know. It's a poppy seed, which is a very, very small seed. Um, so. Bug spray is not enough to protect you from ticks. It is a good tool. Another thing you should do when you come home from being in the woods or on a hike or even playing in a playground that has grass, even if it's short grass, is do a tick check. Check yourself the best you can and then have an adult check your hair and everything else. You don't want to accidentally leave a tick behind and they're very hard to see. They're very small. And it's very important that you do tick checks, okay? Um, so. Do, 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 okay. Talked about, now, we know that ticks aren't only from the woods. They're from fields. They're from places, even your own backyard. Um, you gotta be very careful um, with ticks. Every time you're outside, when you come in, do a tick check, okay? Let's go back through here. Let's see. And if you have pets at home, outdoor dogs or outdoor cats, 
They, need, they should be on a tick protection, tick and mosquito protection medicine and tick, check them for ticks as well because they can bring them into the home and it's not good to have them brought into the home because then if they don't bite the animal and they fall off, they can get on you and bite, bite you as well. So we know the ticks can't fly or crawl. I think we covered just pretty much everything about ticks in here. Um, I usually have more of a question and answer session, but we do have a couple videos. We have a video of what a tick does when it actually bites you. They used a um, pier, a, a pig ear, and they show up close how it looks, uh, it enters its nose in and bites you. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Um, a lot of kids think it's gross. Some kids think, it, think it's neat. Some think it's gross and neat. I'm, one, I'm an adult that thinks it's both gross and neat. So well, I'd like to show you a couple videos of that right now. Forget chainsaw movies and hockey mask villains. If you want some real horror, take a look at this. The living, blood-sucking tick. This is what Europeans call a wood tick. It's a cousin of the deer tick, and they both spread Lyme disease. They're both about the size of a sesame seed. It has a mouth that looks like two saws on the side of a barbed sword. That sword is called a hypostome. Scientists who study Lyme disease wanted to find out how this tick, with that mouth, manages to both cut through the skin and then to hang on for the days that it takes to get a full blood meal. They took video of the ticks biting into the ears of hairless mice. Now, the mice were already dead. Uh, they were sacrificed for the experiment. What they saw was that once the tick picks its spot, it uses those saws to cut into the skin, moving back and forth, doing something that looks a little bit like the breaststroke. And that pushes the hypostome in and pulls the skin back over. Once the tick is solidly embedded in the skin, it doesn't have to expend any energy, so it can relax and drink its fill. There's no practical use for this knowledge yet, but it doesn't hurt to know your enemy. From that, that'll conclude our presentation today about ticks and mosquitoes here in Easton. And try to be safe, enjoy your summer the best you can, and stay safe from ticks and mosquitoes, folks. Thank you so much, and have a great day.